Rangers are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, the up it earlier at about 7 a.m. A group from the post. Welcome to Hashtag PHV 2013 Rapper. Today on Rapper, more pronounced disapproval ratings for Senate President Rilon, House Speaker Belmonte, and Chief Justice Sereno in a December survey. Flash floods and landslides hit Mindanao, killing at least 13 people and forcing thousands of families to evacuate. And thousands of protesters occupy major streets to try to shut down Thailand's capital. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Raptor, your social news network. A new Pulse Asia survey released Monday shows more pronounced disapproval and distrust ratings for three top government officials, Senate President Frank Drillon, House Speaker Sonny Belmonte, and Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. The top issues during the survey period included the devastation from Super Typhoon Yolanda and investigations on the multi-billion peso pork barrel scam. Drillon's approval ratings dropped 7 percentage points, while his trust rating falls 6 percentage points. In its September survey, Pulse Asia said the controversy over the pork barrel scam pulled down Drillon's ratings. His disapproval and distrust ratings for December are both at 21%. 18% of Filipinos surveyed disapprove of Belmonte's performance, while 20% don't trust him. Sereno gets an 18% disapproval rating and 17% distrust rating. The survey also shows more Filipinos approve and trust Vice President Judge Omar Binay than President Benigno Aquino. Binay gets an 80% approval rating and 77% trust rating, higher than Aquino's 73% approval rating and 74% trust rating. Aquino's approval ratings also dropped from 79% in September to 73% in December. Of the three key government institutions, only the Supreme Court gets a majority approval rating of 52%. But none of the three enjoys the trust of most Filipinos, with the Senate's trust rating only at 42%, the House at 39%, and the Supreme Court at 46%. Despite Drillon's drop in ratings, the Senate emerges as a big winner in the survey with a six-point increase in approval ratings from 39% in September to 45% in December. A low-pressure area triggers flash floods and landslides in Mindanao, hitting areas still recovering from the devastation of 2012's Typhoon Pablo. At least 13 people died and 34 others are injured. The affected areas include Surigao del Norte, the towns of Lupon and Taragona in Davao Oriental, the town of Moncayo in Compostela Valley, and Barangay Andap in New Bataan. More than 25,000 families are in evacuation shelters in 16 towns and two cities. At least 33 roads and bridges are not passable, making search and rescue operations more difficult. The state-run Philippine Information Agency reports four towns and one city are now under a state of calamity. A report from the Philippine News Agency says Davao Oriental may also be placed under a state of calamity. State Weather Bureau Pagasa also reports rains in areas recently hit by Typhoon Yolanda or Haiyan. In its 5 p.m. bulletin, Pagasa says the low-pressure area is estimated at 45 kilometers east of Dipolog City. Visayas, northern Mindanao, and Caraga region will experience cloudy skies with moderate to occasionally heavy rain. Pope Francis names Cotabato Archbishop Orlando Quevedo one of the 16 new cardinals Sunday, making him the first cardinal to come from Mindanao. In the predominantly Catholic Philippines, Asia's largest Roman Catholic nation, Quevedo's territory has endured one of the world's longest-running Muslim insurgencies. Within his archdiocese, the church estimates only 51.54% of the population are Catholics, barely a majority. Quevedo, a former president of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, says in a widely quoted paper that the root cause of the conflict in Mindanao is injustice. Quevedo will formally join the College of Cardinals in a consistory to be held on February 22. The new cardinals come from 12 countries in five continents. In his announcement, Pope Francis says the new cardinals, quote, represent the deep ecclesial relationship between the Church of Rome and the other churches throughout the world. In a letter to the new cardinals, Pope Francis also warns them to remain simple and humble and avoid worldliness and celebrations. He adds, 
The post of cardinal is not a promotion or an honor or a decoration. It is simply a service that demands a wider view and a bigger heart. The new Filipino cardinal faced controversy in 2011 when critics tagged him and six other bishops as recipients of expensive vehicles from the government for personal use. Quevedo denies the accusation but admits to having requested a vehicle from the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office, quote, to be used by their social action program. Thousands of opposition protesters occupy major streets in central Bangkok Monday in an attempted shutdown of the capital, stepping up the campaign to overthrow Prime Minister Ying Lak Shinawat. Thousands of flag-waving protesters gather at key intersections in the city, forcing many to leave their cars at home and take public transportation instead. Public Police say several hospitals, hotels, schools, and fire stations are affected by the shutdown. The protests are triggered by a failed amnesty bill that could have allowed former Prime Minister Taksin Shinawat to return from self-exile without going to jail for corruption charges. The protesters say they want to rid Thailand of the Taksin regime. Protest leader Suteb Tagsuban says the rallies are, quote, a people's revolution. The government has not tried to stop the protesters taking over parts of the city, but authorities say they're ready to declare a state of emergency if violence breaks out. Let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 5, Iran will start eliminating its stockpile of enriched uranium and dismantling its nuclear weapons infrastructure beginning January 20th. The move is part of a landmark deal that will lift sanctions on Iran. U.S. President Barack Obama welcomes the news but warns of a tough road ahead toward a comprehensive deal. This deal is a major achievement for President Hassan Rouhani, who won the elections last year by promising a more diplomatic approach with the West. At number six, Kyodo News Agency reports the U.S. Army tested biological weapons in Okinawa, Japan in the early 1960s. Citing military documents it obtained, Kyodo says the same experiments were also conducted on the U.S. mainland and in Taiwan. The report says rice blast fungus was released over rice fields and data was collected on how it affected rice production. And at number eight. French President Francois Hollande's political and personal problems worsen after his girlfriend was rushed to hospital following a report he was having an affair with an actress. Aides say Valérie Trevalier, who lives with the president in the Lazy Palace, was admitted to hospital on January 10th to undergo tests. Closer magazine re uh, earlier reported the 59-year-old Hollande was having an affair with actress Julie Gayet. Hollande threatened a lawsuit but did not deny the substance of the allegations. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. The Golden Globes kick off Hollywood's awards season Monday with A-list nominees vying for the major honors. The awards are considered good indicators of which films will like, likely get the top awards at the Oscars in March. The historical film, 12 Years a Slave, wins the Best Film Drama Award, while crime movie American Hustle gets the top prize for Best Comedy or Musical Film. American Hustle's Amy Adams also takes home the Best Actress Award, while crowd favorite Jennifer Lawrence wins Best Supporting Actress. In the television category, crime drama hit Breaking Bad gets the top prize. The hit TV show also bags an award for star Bryan Cranston. The mean, green, evil Witch of Oz is coming to Manila for the musical Wicked. What does it take to bring the mythical land to life on stage? G. Tonji joins the production's wardrobe and makeup heads backstage as they walk through how they make theater magic. I'm here on stage at the iconic Civic Theater in New Zealand to get to talk to the people behind the magic of Wicked. Paul Flanagan, head of wardrobe, talks to us about the costumes for the witches of Wicked and shares some interesting trivia. This is Glinda's bubble dress. It looks heavy. It is heavy. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that is heavy. Yeah. Wow. Um, in designing this, Susan, the designer Susan Hilferty, wanted to connect Glinda very much to <laughs> the sky and the stars and rainbows. Uh, so all of Glinda's stuff is, is kind of looks lightweight and looks, it's frilly and it, it's full of layers. Uh, Elphaba, on the other hand, the Wicked Witch, is heavier and darker. 
it's very connected to the earth. Um, okay, the quick change out of this and into her shoes uniform is about 15, 16 seconds. 15 seconds to get out of that dress. Out of this dress and into another costume entirely with a wig change at the same time. We are here with Kelly Ritchie. She's head of wigs and makeup. You have about 70 wigs in the show? That go on stage every night, yes. Okay, and then you were also saying how uh, these wigs cost two to seven thousand dollars. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, they're individually hand knotted and made to fit the performer's um, actual hairline and, and head. And um, they take up to 18 to 40 hours to make one wig. Okay, do you want to come over here? Yeah. Basically, we have um, a pancake makeup from MAC called Landscape Green. And we have these awesomely huge brushes. <laughs> That we, um, we pop water into. You put the water in yeah, there. Yep. Yeah. The um, the secret is getting the the, the right um, consistency, water to product ratio, which can take a little of time when you're learning to do it. So we whip it onto the skin. We have a base, a foundation base underneath as well, so it doesn't actually um, grab too much onto the performer's skin. And they can sweat through this. So I mean, there are times when the fingertips will come off and rub a bit, which they then reapply in interval. We do a lot of highlighting and shading. So we use what's called purple haze. And then we have a highlighter called vanilla, which is really nice creamy white, which... So Kelly, tell us, how long does the makeup process take for Alphaba from start to finish? From start to finish, it can take up to about uh, 25 minutes to 45. The biggest musical spectacle comes to Manila after the New Zealand season this January. Jitanji! Rappler Manila. Week it opens on the 22nd of January at the CCP. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our readers and viewers the most emotionally. These 10 stories have gotten the most number of votes on the mood meter. If we take a look today, one of the stories of the weekend, um, Mindanao gets its first cardinal. Interestingly, look at it, it have 55% happy, but a large 36% don't care. A thought leader's piece today, Don't Call Me Madam, um, by Dr. Sylvia Claudio, gets 62% inspired, but 10% don't care. Again, that don't care is interesting because the story that's gotten the most number of votes today is this one, an entertainment story, Claudine and Mom to File Case versus Gretchen, the Barreto family. You have 18% annoyed and 73% don't care. So you see this bringing out the mood of the day. Today, most people don't care, and yet they care enough to click don't care in many of the stories. So interesting, at least in the top story, brings out an interesting trend on entertainment, which is, let's not call it hypocrisy, but an interesting point of debate, certainly, on the mood navigator and mood meter. Today, most people don't care. That is Rappler's newscast for today, Monday, January 13th, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.